called a wonderful bunch of people today. Loving the Lord. Thanking him for his goodness. For his grace. Everything we get from God is because of his grace. His willingness to do for us what we could not do ourselves or what we did not deserve. It's an act of grace. And in that is the love of God. And the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts today by the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Appreciate Brother Gerald, Sister Jenny, known him for many years. Appreciate him let, allowing me to Obey the Lord today and come to be in your midst to bring you a word from the Lord. you got a beautiful building, a wonderful church, and wonderful people. Amen. Praise God. Did you come today with your expectors on? Are you expecting to receive a word from the Lord? If you came expecting today, then you will receive. You will receive a word from the Lord. But if you didn't come expecting to receive, then you won't get anything. You'll leave just as high and dry as you was when you came in. Amen. Amen. I'm always excited about what God's got because he's got something new every day. Amen. Praise God. God is a good God. Good God all the time. God's not against you. He's not against none of us. Matter of fact, God is for you. He's not the God of judgment today, but he's the God of love, mercy, and grace. When Jesus went to the cross, the Father put all the judgment, the anger, and the wrath upon him. He carried it to the cross, when he carried it to the cross, he carried you and I to the cross. When he shed his blood, his blood was shed to purchase our forgiveness, our redemption. In his resurrection, when he was raised, we were raised with him. We are seated right now positionally in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are seated at the throne of God with Jesus. Glory be to God. We need to get out of this idea that, that God is allowing bad things to happen to us. No. No. You wouldn't want one of your children to be sick. Neither does God. You wouldn't want bad things to happen to your family. No. And neither does God. Well, you might say, well, then tell me where is it coming from? Did you know that we've got an enemy? Don't like to talk about him much, but we have an enemy. And he's out to kill, to steal, and to destroy your faith in the only true living God. He's out to tell you that you're going to die with some sickness or with some disease. He's telling you that you know you're, you're single and you'll never have anybody. Maybe you've lost a mate. You know, bless your heart. And you may be thinking, well, there'll nobody will ever be for, ever be with me again. Don't listen to that lying spirit. Don't listen to him. Because God has got some great things in store for you as his beloved. And you are his beloved. I'll get into this a little bit later. But in Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, this is the Lord God speaking. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Aren't you glad that God thinks about you? God has good thoughts towards you. Amen. Says the Lord, thoughts of peace. I could use a whole lot of peace, couldn't you? Thoughts of peace. Jesus said, I give you my peace. Not as the world gives do I give, but I give you my peace. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. Too many of us in the church are living in fear. Fear of what's coming. Fear of what's going to happen. 
God has raised us up on a higher plane, a higher level, to where we are to think like God thinks. We are to believe like God believes. Let's continue with this. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. God has nothing evil in him. Evil is darkness. The Bible tells me that Satan is the God of darkness. He is the God of darkness. And when things that are darkness in our lives, such as we, the devil wants you to believe that you're going to die with some dreaded disease that's in your family, don't listen to the lying devil. Jesus said, I came to heal you. I sent my word and healed them all, healed them. That's a word from the Lord. Amen. Appreciate the brother's testimony about how God healed him. Appreciate the brother's testimony about how that uh, he got a title for his truck when it shouldn't have happened. I've been there, brother. I had that to happen to me years ago. But thank God, when you believe and you stand on the promise, Devil, you can't steal from me. You can't have. You can't have it. It's mine. It's my inheritance, and I stand on the word, and I proclaim that my need is met, and I saw it come to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He says to give you an expected end. I expect good things. I expect great things in this year of 2018. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right. Are you happy in the Lord? Amen. In Isaiah 55, this is the word of the Lord. He says, for as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but waters the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word, this is God speaking, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. What a word. What a word from the Lord. As a contrast here, he says, in, the, in, the, in 10, he says, as the rain cometh down from heaven, and the snow, and it waters the earth. Yes. And it causes the earth to, to bud and to bring forth. And the seed, he said, I give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. There's a promise here that God's going to give you what you need. God's going to give you the desire of your heart. God is going to make the sun to shine in your life. Where there may seem to be darkness and cloudiness in your life, there may be depression and worry and anxiety that is clogging up your life. But I'm here to tell you today that you need to get rid of that mess because it's a spirit of darkness. Don't allow it to control your life any longer. So shall my word be. God's word accomplishes there where he sends it. He sent his word into your life to save you, to heal you, to deliver you, to prosper you, to cause you to walk in the blessings of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. It shall not return. It shall not return. It's not going to return to God void. It means it's going to accomplish exactly what God sent it to do. God has sent his word to this church here that it's going to rise up. 
And it's going to go forth. And it's going to become that mighty power man of God in this vicinity. That it's going to rise up today. And it's going to go forth. And it's going to witness the power of God in it. And it's going to cause people to come in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And it's going to cause people to see the glory of the Lord resting upon your lives, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. It shall accomplish that which I please and where I send it. God is a good God. Hallelujah. 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 In Proverbs 10 and 22, It says, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. Amen. Amen. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. Somebody said, you know, I don't want to be rich. I'm not talking about money today. I believe in financial prosperity. But I believe also in being rich in love. Rich in mercy, rich in patience, being rich in love, being rich in forgiveness, being rich in peace, being rich. How about being more lovable to your mate? How about being more lovable to your children and your grandchildren? How about being more lovable to your unsaved relatives or that person on the job where you work? Bible says we are salt and light. We are salt and light. And we are to be a preservative wherever we go. You know, we need to get out of this mentality, you know, well, I, you know, I just don't believe God will put me somewhere or another where there's a bunch of hell. Well, you better think again. If you love the Lord, then you've been bought with a price and you belong to him, not yourself. It ain't no more about what you want. It ain't no more about what you can do. It ain't no more about yourself, but it's about him. He's called you. Let him place you where he wants you to be and quit grumbling and complaining about where you're at. Because God has put you there so they can see the glory, not you, but the glory of God that rests upon your life. That's a word for somebody today. Thank you, Lord. Praise be to God. Are you happy in the Lord today? God is an awesome God. I'm not going to hold you too long. Not over two or three hours. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. No, but I believe that I have a short word today and that it is a powerful word. That it's a word that will penetrate your life and that it will give you encouragement, that it will give you strength to let you to know that God has got great things in store for you. And I'm going to tell you what they are. In a little bit. Just hang around for the rest of the story. (laughs) Second Kings. Three. Second Kings three and verse 16. I'm not going to read the whole story to you, but there's one verse, the 16th verse. And this is what Elijah, the prophet of God, said. There was kings that was coming together. They was going to battle. And they came to a place where there was no water, no water at all. The men was thirsty, probably dehydrating. The cattle needed water. 
And so they said, what are we going to do? And Jehoshaphat is, said, is there not a prophet in the land? Is there not a prophet that can give us a clear word of direction? They said, yeah. They said, there is Elisha. Get him. Get him down here. We got to hear from God. You got to hear from God today. Amen. Glory to God. This is what the man of God said. Make this valley full of ditches. Hmm. Sounds kind of strange, don't it? Make this valley where you're at, make it full of ditches. Because God is about to call something to happen that's going to be phenomenal. It ain't going to rain, he said. Wind ain't going to blow. But it's going to happen because the Lord said so. Amen. The next day, that valley, the ditches they dug were filled with water. Hallelujah. That was a supernatural act of God. Hallelujah. My word to you today is start expecting good things. Start expecting your church to grow and to blossom. Start expecting your life to increase. Start expecting your life to be filled with the joy of the Lord. Stop looking at the defeat that's going on in your life. Because every one of us face trials. Some kind of a trial we face every day. For two weeks, the devil told me, Brother Gerald called me. He said, the devil began to tell me, you don't need to go there. Well, you ain't got nothing to say. I said, no, devil, I don't have anything to say, but God does. God does. Four days ago, the devil made my wife sick. The devil said, see, you can't go. You got to stay home with your wife. We began to pray. Began to pray and believe God. And we saw the hand of God move. Why, brother? Because we prayed in faith, believing. Believing. Two days ago, the devil started to make me sick with a cough. My wife had it. Well, I wound up with a bad cough. I'm talking about horse. If when, when you cough, you feel like it's ripping you out. Anybody know what I'm saying? I said, no, devil, I am not claiming this as mine. That's not mine. That heart disease is not mine. Mmm. That kidney problem is not mine. No, that prostrate problem is not mine. That cancer is not mine. It belongs to the devil. Guess what, devil? Jesus Christ, hallelujah, has redeemed me from the authority and the power of darkness. And I have been delivered out of your control, out of your hands. I am in the kingdom of the living God. And Jesus is my savior. He is my healer. He is my deliverer because he sent his word and his word has healed me. I don't look at the circumstances. I don't look at what the doctor's report says, but I look at his report and I like his report a lot better a whole lot better there's nothing wrong in taking medicine I believe in good doctors good doctors there's good doctors in this land good doctors I believe there's godly men that are doctors Nothing wrong with going to doctors. They can help you. But the medicine they give you, take it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. I said, take it in the name of Jesus. 
and believe for a healing to take place in your life. You know, when we pray for people, we, we, I mean, Gerald talked about this just a few moments ago back in the back. You know, we, we as men of God, we believe in the divine supernatural. We believe in instantaneous miracles. And brother, we believe that they do happen. We believe in healings. A healing is different than a miracle. A miracle is instantaneous. A healing is progressive. It's progressive. You find in the Bible that they were healed as they went. Right? They were healed as they went. So if you get prayed for and you don't see something happen immediately, don't get discouraged. Be encouraged. Why? Because the word of God has went forth and it says, Jesus said this, you are healed. Amen. Yeah, but preacher, you know, I've got these feelings. You know, I, I, I just got these feelings, you know, that, that I'm going to die with cancer or, I, you know, it was in my family and a heart disease and so forth, you know, and, and that's just my lot in life. Well, if that's what you believe, then get ready. Because you're about to check out of here. Oh, it got quiet then. <laughs> but I have a word from God that I'm going to live long and be strong. Live long, brother, and finish strong. Hallelujah. 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 He told him to dig ditches. It was preparation time, wasn't it? Time for preparation. It's time to start preparing because something big is coming. Talking to somebody this morning. Start making preparations because something big is coming. And if you don't start making preparations when it comes, it'll pass you by because you won't be looking for it. I said earlier, get your expectors on. Expect great things to happen in your life. Expect. How do I start digging ditches? That sounds a little bit odd, preacher. Start getting rid. See, they was rocks in those ditches. They was probably stumps. They was probably debris in the ditches. Guess what? They had to get it out, didn't they? They had to remove what was in the ditches. Get rid of the bitterness in your life. Start, dig that thing out of there. Get rid of the unforgiveness. Get it out of there. Get rid of the doubt and the unbelief. Get it out of there. Get it out of there. Get rid of the fear that's clogging up your ditch because water is coming. I'm talking about a flood. Hallelujah. I'm talking about a move of God that's going to stagger this community. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Start digging ditches. Clean out what's, what's burdening you down. Don't let the cares and the distractions of this life burden you down where you can't hear God but you've got your mind more settled on what's going on around you than what God is trying to say to you. It's easy to get caught up. It's easy, brother, to get caught up in the distractions of this world and to begin to look at them more than you look at God and what God wants to do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The water came because they dug the ditches. They, you're here today and you are believing God for great things. I want you to start expecting. Start expecting a better job if you need one. 
Start expecting God to use you in the ministry. Start expecting God to provide for you and your family in a way that you've never seen it happen before. Start believing God that God is going to send you a mate, a godly mate. Start believing God that they get your expector on if you're looking for children to be born into your life, into your family, husband and wife. Start believing God that God's will is for you to bear children, that you be fruitful, that the loins of your body be filled, be filled with goodness, that you bring forth children, that your quiver be filled with arrows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get rid of the doubt. Well, you know, I ain't seen nothing happen. Well, start looking, stop looking at what the natural is saying. We don't live by the natural. We live by the supernatural. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's see, where was I? I haven't even preached my message. <laughs> I hadn't. I was, I was sitting over there during praise and worship, and the Holy Ghost began to speak to me. And I have to deliver what he, what he, what he tells me. Amen. Amen. The pastor got me here to obey God, you know, to give you a word. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Okay. The title of my message today was Blessed, favored, and loved by God. Blessed, favored, and loved by God. I mean, know that the promises of God are in Christ Jesus, yes and amen. Mm -hmm. They are means God has already said yes to them, and we have to say amen to them. You know what that word amen actually means? It means I believe it. I believe it, and I receive it. And I'm going to act on it. I'm going to become a doer and not a hearer. I'm going to become a doer. I am a doer. I am a doer. I am a doer. I can't hear you. I am a doer. I'm a doer of the word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise you, Lord. We are accepted in the beloved. Yes, we are. We are accepted in the beloved. Ephesians 1. And verse 6. I don't know about y'all, but I don't know if you mark in your Bible, if you color in it or what. But I've got so much stuff wrote in the margins of my Bible that it's just about hard for me to even see the print. <laughs> you know? And some people wouldn't dare mark in their Bible. It's so holy. <laughs> but what you mark in there is a place of reference. A place of reference. You are accepted in the beloved. Ephesians 1 and 6 says, To the praise of the glory of 
His grace. His grace, that which we cannot do ourselves, that which we do not deserve, but God did it. Wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Who is the beloved? It's Jesus. Jesus is the beloved. Glory to God. Jesus is the beloved. Second Peter one. Second Peter one, three through four. Tell me, preacher, how am I going to get all of this that God is saying? How am I going to get it in my life? How many know that we go to school to be educated, to be trained, to be educated? You know, we have to educate ourselves in the Word of God. We have to do that. If we want to walk in the blessing of the Lord, those blessings don't fall off don't fall on you like ripe cherries off of a cherry tree. You have to believe for them. Not just mentally, but in your spirit. You have to believe that the promises of God for you are yes and amen. He said. Verse 2 Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things. How many things? All things. All means all, doesn't it? All things. What you need is in that all things. That pertain unto life and godliness. The life that God would have you to live. The life that God, through inheritance in Christ, has got prepared already for you. See, before there was ever a need in your life, God already made the provision. Already made the provision. Nothing took God by surprise. God knew what would be happening. God knows the end from the beginning. God has been to the end of your life and back, and he knows exactly what's going to happen in your life before it ever takes place, and God has already made provision for you. God has already got little care packages dropped off on your way down through your road of life. If you're not careful, If you're not careful, you'll pass that care package by. You won't see it. You'll miss it. You will miss it. That's why I said keep your expector on. Keep your receiver going. God's always transmitting, but keep your receiver on. Don't let the cares of this life distract you from receiving from God. That's why there's so many in the church, not here but everywhere I've been, they have problems. Yes. Preachers have problems too. But it's because we have not a lack of knowledge of what God's plan for our life is. Too many times we we go to church, this is my religious duty. I'm going to church because this is my religious duty. 
No. We come to church to be in fellowship one with another. I need you. You need me. We need each other. We come to church as the body collectively to worship the Lord, to give him praise, to give him thanksgiving, to honor him. Amen? It says, pertaineth to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. By these great and precious promises, that's what that word whereby, it could have been therefore. But he said, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. Exceedingly. Exceedingly. It means it goes beyond your expectation. It goes beyond what your, our little pea brain mind can begin to look at. Exceedingly. You know, God don't never do anything literally. It's always in abundance. I heard somebody say one time, God don't never know when to stop. I'm glad he don't never stop. I'm glad he just keeps pouring it on. Amen. Amen. If somebody don't want their blessing, I'll take it. I'll be glad to take it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whereby these great, whereby are given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. I like being a partaker of his divine nature. Amen. Of course, I know everything's going to work out all right. Everything works together to the good of them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Amen. Yes. It didn't say that they might work together. It said all things work together. Work together. You know, the good and the bad, it all works together. If you love God and love the call according to his purpose. But now, beloved, listen to me. You can't just slingshot yourself through life and expect this verse to work for you. You have to be dedicated. You have to be rooted and grounded in God's word. You have to be a knower. You have to know in your knower, amen, that God is for you and not against you. You have to know that whatever situation that you find yourself in in life, you can still give God the glory because this is only temporal and it will pass. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And through these great and precious promises, we escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. Through lust. What is that word lust? It means everything that the world is seeking after. Fame. Prosperity. Houses, boats, cars, money, more money. If you had a million dollars, you'd want another million. And you blow the first million, and when you got the second million, it would blow it too. <laughs> Let us get our eyes off of worldly attractions and let's stay focused. I've used this as an illustration, not here. How many have ever went to a fair? Circus. You know what the main attraction in that circus is? It's the Ferris wheel. It's the highest thing there. Or was the last time I was. That's been years ago. You ever rode the Ferris wheel? It's a pretty good ride. But it's the main attraction. 
and I'm, I'm, I'm driving a point home here. You're going to there to ride that Ferris wheel. But some way or another, you get distracted and you don't ever make it until very late. Why, preacher? Because there are little booths that are set up all along your way. Screaming at you, hey, come here. Throw a dart and win a balloon. Or throw a dart and win a bear or something other. Bobble for apples. Throw a penny and see what you win. It's to distract you. The devil uses the cares, the worries, and the frustrations of this life to sidetrack you, to keep you off of course. Why? Because the devil don't want you walking and living in faith. The devil don't want you to live the life that God has got for you. In closing, I'm not going to turn there because I don't have time to go through it all. But Deuteronomy 28, you can read it, the entire chapter. It's the blessings and the curses. The blessings and the curses. The first few verses there, it talks about all the blessings. You're blessed in the city, you're blessed in the field. Your house is blessed. Your family's blessed. Your loins are blessed. You know? And then the latter part of it, it talks about the curses. And they're bad. They're bad. And somewhere along in the latter part of it, it says that the, that the time would come there when you would say, oh, I wished. Say, what did he say? Oh, I wished it was evening. Oh, it's morning and I wished it was evening. Why? Because of such frustration. Such frustration. I talked about digging ditches. These promises, the Bible says that God has supplied all of our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. I challenge you to see those promises there that they are your inheritance. You don't have to go to God and beg him for them, believe him for them. How do I do that? Lord, I thank you that all of my need is supplied. Lord, I thank you that you are my shepherd and I have no lack. I have no need because you are my supplier. Lord, I thank you that I am the head and I'm not the tail. I thank you, Lord, that I am above and not beneath. I thank you, Lord, that everything that I touch is prosperous. I thank you, Lord, that you have blessed the work of my hands. I thank you, Lord. Begin to thank him for the promises. Do it every day. If you have to do it, do it every day. Begin to thank him for the promises because that's what they are. They're not curses. Amen. You're not under the curse of the law. Those, those promises could not be kept, Brother Gerald, because they were laws. But Jesus came and delivered us from the curse. Jesus broke the curse of the law. Jesus broke it so that you, you said, well, you know, preacher, you know, uh, I'm just having a hard time with some issues. Let me tell you, Jesus did for you and I what we could not do ourselves. Jesus, his work is a finished work. His work is a completed work. You mean I don't have to keep the law? In the spirit, you keep the law. By walking in the spirit, the law is fulfilled in you. Amen. This issue that I said earlier about the beloved, 
I want you to see yourself that you are the beloved of God. That you're not a sinner. That you've been saved by grace. The unmerited, undeserved favor of God. God giving you what you didn't deserve. Mercy and grace. And Jesus' baptism by John, 